Hello and welcome to this week's Woodwork and Wisdom. Today we're talking timber prep and what do we need to do to get your bit of wood looking nice and smooth and beautiful? Okay so our plank we have here is a piece of sycamore. We're going to show you how we can hand plane this up and prepare it but first of all let's go over those key fundamental parts of what makes this board if you like. So you all understand the terminology as we go through. So we have our width that's across here, okay? So if I get my fingers, that's that bit. Our length is down the length of the board, right down to the end, all right? So between the two hands, our edge, all right? That's our thickness, is this bit, okay? So the main top edge here would be classed as our face. This would be our edge in a minute. We also, on the end of the board, have the end. We have a corner. And then obviously we have the edges down the side. All right, so all those little bits make up that terminology for a board. If you work out your measurements or anything, it's always important to try and write them down in a sequence so you'll understand them everyone else would. I would always work with length first, and that's running down the grain, lengthwise. All right, so the growing tree running that way. So length, width is across it, thickness, will be the last measurement. So those three measurements are quite an important part to write down in that sequence, okay? That will give you the idea of what they are. And then obviously we have our face, which I'm looking at now. We're gonna do the prep on here, and our edge as well in a second, okay? Ideally, square edge material is gonna be easier to work with. Something with a wane edge board's more difficult to start with. You've gotta cut it square before you start. So if you can get square edge material, so much easier to work with. Even if it's square, it doesn't mean it's dried and seasoned to a square state. It will distort a little bit. So my bit of oak actually on here, we just brought up against the sycamore. We look on the overhead camera. Get that bit of wiggle. So. This corner is not quite square where it's dried, it's shrunk a little bit. So we've got to square that up in a second, okay? Hopefully the board hasn't got any twists or anything. We're going to examine that a little bit as we go on. Okay, with our timber, we've got a piece of sycamore, we've got a piece of oak. We're going to hand plane those so they will actually join together, they're square, they're flat. Is that important? Can you not just go with your wood and just glue it up? Ideally, if you want to make anything with a joint or anything, Everything needs to be flat, so the surfaces will line up nice and smoothly. I think let's have a look on the overhead, see what we get on there. Let's so nice and smooth on here. Everything comes together, it's equal thickness. It also means I have something to mark off of to do that joint, to give me the accuracy. So first stage really is that timber prep of getting things square and accurately done. All right, so that's a really important part. So anything you want to make if you want to glue it together. So we've got these two lengths of ash here that are just rough sawn. Okay, first thing I've got is differences of thickness, different places. I've got a little step here. I've also got this wiggle you can see down the boards. Yeah? So they're not going to glue together very well. The two bits underneath have been surfaced and flattened. They come together nicely. So that's the difference between something that's rough sawn and something that's hand planed, squared up do all that prep too. So that preparation is such an important part. Why do we get this sort of thing with timber? Why do we get this movement? It might be something like a heart defect. It can be how it naturally dries. So let's just move those. Let's just bring our log in just for a second. Okay, so I think if you have a look on the end there. So our timber when we get it, it's actually sawn as a log, okay? Once we've actually sawn it into planks, so you've got your boards, it needs to be left to dry. As it dries, it will twist and warp a little bit and actually distort very slightly, which is a bit of a shame. Nothing stays exactly flat. The middle boards here where the grain, and we can see the heart there, is at 90 degrees to the edge of the board or to the center, is quarter saw and they're more stable. As we come out towards the edge, the boards are gonna shrink away from that center point. So this board, if you take it, we've got a bark edge here, similar to there, but there. Our growth rings are coming round here. The centre of the board was actually over here. That's actually that sort of position in our log, bigger tree. On here, we put a straight edge on it. You can see we get that wiggle. So this is distorted away from that centre point. That's going to cause issues when we're trying to flatten it and everything else. So where it's come from in that tree is also quite an important part. The quarter saw and stuff is more stable, but tends to be narrower boards because you've got the heart shake to take out. 
the wider board down the bottom here will cup away from that center. So we've got to balance that all out a little bit and think about what's happening there, okay? So that natural defect and drying process can cause the material to warp, twist, even, actually in this case, split. So we have our heart shape. Let's just lift that off. Let's give you an idea of this. So this has now come up all the way up to here. So quite a big crack. So those little things can make a difference on what's going to happen with our timber prep. So where it is in, from the tree, how it's dried and everything else play an important part. So having given you a bit of a guide of materials, how they're going to shrink away from the centre, how the boards will cut, we've got that selection. So my bit of sycamore, we've got a few things here, we've got the bit of oak. Now I know on this oak edge we've got slight taper coming off towards the edge here, so it's not square. This is rough sawn, I can feel it's also got a little bit hollow, even across that narrow width, so that's going to cause a few issues. The bit of sycamore, just a quick look on the end, it is quarter sawn, I've got a centre point the board here. The bit, actually, if we have a quick look on the camera and the close-up, we're missing a little bit here. So there was a heart shake down through here. That's got a crack in it, so that's come off. Then the rest of the board, pretty square down through. So we're going to cut this to make two bits. We'll probably lose that section on the end in a second. And we're going to make something as like a chopping board. So we will have sycamore, oak, and another sycamore bit on the edge. All right, so we're going to have to plane this flat. So where to start? This is that kind of dilemma. First thing, can we break it down into smaller bits? It's more manageable, it's easier to do. You're not planning a long length, so two shorter bits can be easier to work with. Right? The bit of oak, again, we can do a similar thing. We've got to look at, we need to see where things are. Now, we said about the twisting and the warping. How do you see that? It's difficult to show you. I mean, if we put it on a bench, I don't know if we go to the other camera here. This doesn't sit very square to start with. Right. It's also got a little bit of rock, corner to corner, which I can do. We turn it over, the other edge is flatter. Everything you can use in real traditional tool. Now let's just see if we can set these up. And we'll do it on the bit of oak because it's quite an easy one to kind of show you. We put, and these are winding sticks. Now I put it on the, the end really, which we know is a bit more exaggerated. We've got black edge, we have this one I think is silver. And then hopefully you'll see a little bit more. Let's check at our position then. So a material, we're just going to look at the bit of oak at the moment. I want to show you how much twist is in that narrow section we have down here. Right? So we set up two winding sticks. Now you can make wooden winding sticks. These are aluminium ones. The nice thing I like with these, they actually have a silver line and a black line, which helps identify where things are as our twist. Helps me see it a little bit easier. If you go with just wooden ones, You've got to plane them up exactly the same size, put them either end, but if they're two bits of wood the same colour, tricky to actually identify where things are out. So ideally two different species would work better. On the aluminium ones, they're nice and light, they pack away, they're there, okay? So our winding sticks, all we've done is position them on the piece of wood. Now if we have a look down that bit of wood, I'm just going to get a backboard just to put in behind to give us something to help focus the camera a bit more. If I bring that up, let's just set this one square better. If you look at them down through here, you get your front edge where my pencil is just coming into, and then we get the back one. Now on this side, you can see more black where the pencil is. All right, so that's there. If I come across, you can see the lines on here, they're coming up, they're getting narrower this end. So that's giving you the scope of what we're looking at. What we want to try and do is get this, so that's the wrong way, so it's dead equal. That would tell me the board's really flat. At the moment, we've got that little bit of twist, that orientation that's putting that out. So, visibly, if I did this as a, a thing, I'd actually sight down that line. So I'm probably going to block the back of the camera just a little bit. I'd get into here, and I'm going to look down through what's happening to see where they are. Okay, so that, that simple thing with setting those winding sticks up, we're going to use them a little bit. That's a good little setup at the moment just to show you how basic that is, even with something rough sawn. Okay, we're going to use them a bit more for the project. So we're going to put those just back out the way for a second. So the next little stage, we need to break our bit of sycamore down. So first thing, let's get a ruler. And we have that there. Now we set about on here. We just have a quick look and just bring this in. I know I've got that funny bit that's missing down on here. That break out, that is there. We have 840, so 420 is halfway, so that's coming to there. 
Whoop, I got the other end. Anything? No, nah, that's square. Nice and parallel there. Not quite square. We know it's got a bit of twist. So we've got our setup point. We now need to mark that across. So let's just bring a square into play. And we're going to come down there. And we'll do an edge. So that's our cut-off point in path to give us the two sections. We can also lose that funny bit. No point in having that, so we can lose that. So, next stage, we're going to set up, we're going to cross-cut that with a handsaw, and then we'll start our planing. We can do the same a little bit with the oak, maybe make it a bit shorter, but at the moment, let's break the sycamore down into those shorter components. So we've got our bench hook in place. A bit of sycamore can go up against it. We're going to cross-cut this... Uh, we want something as a tenon so let's put the glasses back on. I've got my line coming across and down the edge towards me. So I can see it. I can come over to that bench hook. I could even use that just as a little bit as a guide. I've got more saw up high. That's better. I'm just over my line. I want to come back a tiny bit. Um, and fingertip. Just working nicely there. Being nice and gentle. So first bit done. Okay, so we have our two bits, about the same length, a little bit out, and I mean, oh, a couple of mil. Bit of oak, let's have a look as well. We could cut it down. Is there anything I don't like on this? Going mean, down, gets a little bit thinner there, it's thicker here. A little bit of a hollow. No matter where I put that, it's going to be in this. We can actually make this shorter. Now I'm just looking at open end of the board. So this has been cut off as something else. This is the seasoned end, which is more likely to have any defects or cracks in it. So we cut that as well. So I just put a line on there. Let's bring our square in. And just going to come over so I can get that a bit more supported. Into there. Bring my head over a bit. Pencil just to draw a line down. And we prep that one exactly the same now. So we've got our line on here coming over. Again, this is just breaking it down into more manageable sizes so I'm not flattening a lot more than we need. So our three bits. So we've got an option. We go that way, this will come up. This has got quite a drop in the middle here. I've got a lot to take off the sycamore, that's possible. We can turn that over. We'll probably have it that way, I think. That will look nicer. And hopefully, less work. All right. So, that's not getting out of that aspect. If that's what you needed, whip-wise, yeah, you might have to do it. So, at the moment, we have our three bits of material. They're set there, they're sewn, they're okay. So, we've got our annual rings we've set about. We've set the heart is on here. A little bit of chestnut that we looked at earlier with our curved grain. Now, this one, the top of this board, you can see the hollow underneath it. And that's coming there, like that there. If I had another board like that, I'd turn it over and have it the opposite the other side. Okay? So, if we cut it and we were more that grain orientation that we've got on the chestnut, we need to look at trying to reverse it. Why? It'll try and keep the board flatter overall as a finished item. If the grain is all the same orientation and it's cupping up, both boards will cup up. It will actually curve this a lot more here. Likewise, if they're both the same orientation there, it'll pull it down. We want to try and keep it level as an item when done. So therefore, we've got to think about that grain orientation. So if you made something as a tabletop, you would have alternate boards. So cup up, down, up, down, across that width. Really important to get into that aspect of understanding what that cupping will do long term. All right? Timber will move and expand and contract with humidity. So therefore, we've got to take that into account when we make anything. So that cut board can cause issues. My sycamore is pretty flat and it's also quarter sawn, which is a little bit of an advantage. Got some flat grade here, my bit of oak. 
coming there, coming up. So actually that's quarter song, but running the opposite way to what we've got now. So it's running that way. That'll work, not gonna cause any issues. So we need to look at which side we want as a face edge and everything else. We could turn this over, that's there. We could have the middle towards the center. I'm gonna have the outer edge of the tree towards the middle, have the heart edges facing further outwards. Okay, I just think it would look nicer. That would look good as a top. So this actually now, I'm just gonna bring this back across the bench a little bit. We're gonna have as our face edge there, all right. This one and that one there. Oh, I might be a bit of hope. Let's go that way. Okay, just because it's actually got a clean surface at the moment. Gonna be easier to see. So those three, and then we're gonna trim off more of what I would class as the sappy wood on that bit of oak. So that's our three edges. So that's the first thing we've actually now gotta do. We've got to flatten this. And then this one, and then this. All right, so we're gonna go through each stage. So first thing, we're gonna just push those back along the bench. This we're gonna bring back down. We're just going to set the plane up. We're then going to look at skimming this flat, checking it's flat and everything else. So we'll set the bench up, get ready for that. Right, so we've got our three bits of wood here. We've got the sycamore, the oak, and a bit of sycamore. I'll kind of just balance them on the bench here. We're going to actually, in reality, plane up each surface, all four sides. So any pencil marks I put on this, the chance of are we're going to lose at some stage. We will add some pencil marks as we go through. So a good place that we're not going to plane up at the moment, so it does mean we can mark, we go to the end. So I think we looked on that end camera, I've just put a batten in, I'm going to draw a bit with the pencil line there, just bring the oak one back up. I've now got two lines that give me an indicator of where they line up across that end. All right, so I know they've got to be that way round, the oak is in the middle, we know, we know we've got the sycamore either side. That's given me a reference point of which way round was that? Where was it? So all those little things are going to play quite an important part. So first bit done. We've got a reference point. I've also kept them in order. If you want, we could have number one, two, three, but we know we're going to plane that off. So first board we're going to bring in. We're going to hold it somehow in our bench. So we've got a tail vise going to clamp it in. You could go normal vice, doesn't matter. First thing we'll start to look at, what are we going to use to do this with? We want a hand plane. You could have whatever you like, could be low angle, could be a number four, four and a half, could be bigger. The longer the plane, the easier it is actually to flatten and get this nice and flat. So a four, yeah, it'll take a bit more effort. Five will be better to work with, nice, slightly longer, so it's going to help me get that flat edge. Don't go with something too, too heavy, too short like a block plane. No, you're not going to get it flat. It's going to be tricky to do. We're going to want a square. We're going to use our winding sticks to show you how we can get things level. So at the moment, just kind of look at this. I can even bring the square in at this stage and see, have I got any cupping? I'm just rocking this across it a little bit. Let's come down here as well. Do we get a bit of curve? So very slight curve there, a little bit there. How is it sat on the bench? Does it rock too much? We know it's got a little bit of curve in it. I can tighten up my vice a little bit, that's good. All those little things play a part. Next thing we are playing, we want to make sure, first of all, it is sharpened. And we have references to videos, you can watch for that as well. So there are links to those coming up, all right? So look at the sharpening bits. That's paramount if you're gonna do this. The first thing you wanna do, sharpen the plane. It's a sad way of reflecting on it, but that needs doing. Then I'm gonna set the plane up. Most of us would just go straight into the job. Now we have our adjuster in here, and again, we've got videos we've done over a period of what's happening. So nothing cutting, I wind the blade forward a little bit. So this is giving me that quick setup just to see what's happening. So the scrap block, better to work with. Now I'm getting a cut on the left-hand side, not on the right, so we're gonna swing our lateral lever, just bring that round over just a tiny bit. That's better, so now we're more equal Cut there, cut there, okay? Just a tiny bit. Now, how much cut are we taking? I reckon just a little bit too much, so I'm gonna wind it back just fractionally, then take up that backlash and get it back up. So, hopefully now our planes should be pretty good just below that cut edge. Not a lot happening there now. We know we've got the blade parallel. First stage, we just wanna to start to take off this rough sawn surface. 
to help you guys see what's happening, I'm going to draw a pencil line down the board. Squiggle on it, if you like. That'll be good. Gonna bring the plane up now. Just touching what's happening now, we're just taking the high spots. Most people at this stage are starting to get a bit paranoid about what they're cutting. And I'm, I'm working different directions. I could come across it. Now we've set it up quite fine. We're only getting these really fine little dusty type shavings. I think we can have a look. All right, nothing very big on there. Why? We're hitting the top of the saw mark, so we're just literally scraping a small amount off. The temptation is to take the blade up a lot more. You're going to struggle with that. So let's start where we are and we'll knock off those high bits. Again, change in direction. We can come down the grain. Now, getting more cut coming through now, but still, let's have a quick look now. A little bit light, a bit fluffy. So, Gonna bring the blade up just a tiny bit. Now, wait it till now because I want to see how much flat I've got on here, how much resistance I'm getting. Now I'm cutting a whole area, not lots of little lines. So we're gonna bring up a tiny bit. Wow, that's a difference. So again, we're working down the grain at the moment. If you're struggling to push it, bring the cut back, make sure it's sharp. Now at this stage, I haven't really looked at grain orientation down the block. Just really seeing what's going on. So we're getting something as a nice shaving. The blade, we've also got a little bit of camber to, so we take the corners off again. That's in part the sharpening videos. Just having a feel what's going on. I've still got rough bit here. Pencil line up in here, wrap it on the end. So we need to have a look at what's happening. Again, we could bring the square back in for a second and see what's going on. I know I'm not all the way down through. Now the square is a quick and easy way of assessing this. I'm getting a little bit of light on my right hand side if I bring down through. So I know I've got a little bit of drop on that edge. So I grab the plane again. Deliberately now, coming across. Start to check again now. I could even use the bottom of the plane. Still got that little bit on that edge. So right hand side drifting away. Let's just move a few things. Let's slide our boards up a little bit. Hoping we can show you that nicely using the winding stick. So let's just set that up. So just set the winding sticks up. We've got them parallel, we've got the black, we've got the server in the background. I'm gonna put my glasses on now. I'm gonna get my head down, just looking at what I get as a line. And they're coming across. Takes a little bit of effort to see, and you've got to remember this is the most traditional way of doing this over the years. Now, far side, so this side over here, I get a little bit of high spot where it's coming up. So, if you guys can see it, now you will get a black line here, you get a black, and then you get the silver lines in the background. So, we get our circle on here. Far one's just a little bit, that is not a lot. Again, other things we can start to do, move these along, see what happens visually. Okay, so I've probably got my shoulder in the way a little bit now, you can probably see, alright, but we can move your winding sticks. Now, by getting them parallel and using the black lines as a guide on the far one, and you get those ridges in between the aluminium, gives you a good guide of where things are. Easier to see than actually a traditional winding stick, just of two bits of wood. So what we're trying to do, set your eye up, I'm going to level with a line, coming down, other side, I get more of this side. I need to make sure I'm in line with the board. That's telling me this side is slightly low on the back corner, so I'm high a little bit. So now I need to start to adjust it. Just take a little bit off. So let's go back round to the bench. I'll move those. We want them back in place in a second. So we're back up in the vice. Just checking we're not getting any too much movement or anything on here. Do things up. 
this point I know the right hand side goes off a bit so I need more left hand edge coming down at the moment pushing parallel with the grain work back across so we've got a little bit of curve Going down through, still got, and I'm using the square just really easier for me to see. I could use the body of the plane if you like, and we can come down through. I'm getting a little bit of a hollow still right hand side, so I need to work on that. Square, we're going to need a square to do this anyway, so whichever way you go, you've got something just to check it with. I'm going to put this plane down on its side, don't stand it up. So there, we're going to come down through. Nice and level with the hand pressure. Going through again now. Back corner I've still got a little lump in here we haven't got. Still got a little bit of sawn grain right there. The rest of it coming on. Grain direction just looking at what's going on. And then we want to have a quick check again with our square. Still a little bit on that side, so we need more out, probably down the middle. Nice easy push. Let's get that one out. Again, we're still working to try to lose that little bit of sawn grain. Just back in. Square that's flatter down through there, that looks good. Next thing we'll know, have we got any twist again? Now let's move a few things about. So we want winding sticks again, we're just really looking down through, seeing what we've got. So I've got my eye in, I've got my pencil eye, just looking at. So I'm lining up with one of the black lines on the back. Going to probably block your camera just a little bit now. I've got a high spot far side up on here, just a tiny little bit. So, coming on here, we get our black line. We're trying to get an equal space on the silver or underneath. So, it looks pretty good at the moment. So, let's move up and see if we get anything different. It looks pretty good. I'm trying to look at the camera screen. I'll have a visual proper look in a second just to see what happens. So I'm using that in different places just to see where things are. We're not bad. Let me just have a run around the front again. That's pretty good. So we're checking things look equal. We're coming right out to the corners a little bit if we can. And that's going to exaggerate a little bit what's going on. If anything, a ah, oh, tiny little bit down here. Nothing too much, which is good. So, let's have a quick look again, see what's going on, have a feel. Then I'll just bring it back in. I'm going to grab my square, I'm checking the square is nice and clean on the back. Coming down through, check we're flat all the way. Giving us a good reference point. Okay. A little bit. I'm going to go parallel now. And I'm trying to do all the way down, overlap. If you're looking at the shading on the plane, it's coming up the middle. I've created a little bit of camber on that blade so the corner points aren't going to dig in. 
so pretty good there. This is just about leveling things up. Going to go back in my square just to check, and again, there, checking what light we're getting. Pretty good down through there. We're flat across the board, hopefully. Other thing I can do with one of the winding sticks, I'm just going to go diagonally. All right, do I get a little bit of rock there? Tiny only a bit there, so it would suggest I've got high bit just in the middle. Tricky bit to get. So lower the plane as I come on, and skim out. Again we go corner to corner. That's pretty good. That's pretty good there. Down the middle we're pretty equal. Again, just going to sneakily use this to see if I get any light. I think my square being thinner is a bit easier to do. Okay, good. Let's take that out. So first size we've got done. Nope. So we've got that leveled. Now, I'm going to do an arrow off of there. Now if we can see that probably on the camera here. You can see my arrow that I've just drawn on there. We're now going to work on this edge. So that top board, we're going to square that corner up. So we're going to put it back into the vise there. Now on this one, just with a quick visual, what's going on? Not too bad there. There's a little bit of angle. So it tilts a little bit, a bit the other way. So, high spot, this edge. Again, first few touches, nothing's happening. Yeah, it is. It's just taking the high spots off literally where the saw cut is, and this is done with a band saw. I can also see just from first touches now, I've got a high bit there, one on the back, hollow in the middle. I've got to work on that a little bit now. So, go there, push down. At the moment, keeping things parallel, we could, if you want, Take a little bit off. Take a bit there. Now I know the left hand side is the major bit I've got to work to. That's the high spot. Temptation at this stage, I want to crank the blade up. You know it was cutting right on the last cuts. So we're going to leave it exactly where it is. Just empty the plane out on here. We're getting no cut. I don't know if we can see that on the camera. Let's have a quick. Yeah, got that there. Now on here we've got that in colour. Still got a drop. So the board actually got a hollow coming into the centre. I'm cutting either end here, getting a flat. Start to check what's happening here now. If anything, I've overcut the side nearest me. I've tilted a bit. Now let's take a bit off the far side. So now I've angled the plane. So we're not square. We're deliberately aiming for that back edge. I feel what's going on. Still working on that band saw cut on the edge. So still a tiny hollow. Slowly going, that's good. Nice and controlled. We push. Do one more. Okay, at this stage, we've got something that is smooth. There's no band saw cut. We now need to start to have a look and see what's going on on here. Now, I can do this with the square. I was going to take it out of the vise, which I might do in a minute, just to see what's going on. 
you need to be able to see it. So on this stage I can see I've got a tiny little bit on the right hand side coming down, a little gap. Normally if I'm going to do this, and you, if you've watched the video I'll pick it up, I come to there. That's good now I can see that I've got, yeah, yeah, I've got to take a bit off nearest me there, coming back towards me, that's pretty good there. This edge I've got a corner to come off towards the edge we've already done. So back into our vice. And now I've got to remember where we were. Just going to bring the plane down just a tiny bit and cut. We want to come across there, down there. Do another one. Be nice and light at the moment. Just bring the plane blade back up. Round it back. I want to get the lighter cut. So that's just taking hopefully a high spot. Next important bit when you bring the plane on to do anything nice and gently. Okay. You can say not really cutting, taking a nice fine shaving. Just actually nibbling those high spots. That's good there. I know I've got a bit there. Feel what's going on. Gonna take it back out the vice again. We'll hold up, we'll have a look into the camera. I've got the lighting behind there, which is good. Hi there. Come down. Fair there, and I'm working all the way down the board. See what's going on. Far end, it's actually pretty flat. Tiny bit left hand side. Back to me, I've got a little bit of a hollow and a high corner right hand side. A couple of cuts. Same again. Check it. So, starting there with me, hold up. Still a little bit there. A little bit there. Good thing it's the same side. That's in the middle. Okay. So now I'm deliberately aiming for that high spot. Left hand corner. We'll have another look, so I'll just, just drop the plane down. Put this out. Hold it up to some light. See what's going on. So I've got a tiny bit again now. This side over, got that there, take too much off that bit. Not bad on the far end, in the middle. Right hand side is high now, so I'm just going to grab my pad so I know I'm there. Again, view it, and then it comes across. And then this side, uh, just because I've forgotten now, it seemed a long time ago. A little bit, double checking. Okay. Tiny bit. Playing around with the plane set, so I want to bring that back, see if we can get lighter shaving. Got a high spot at the moment, right hand corner. Just gently bringing the blade back up, minute increase of depth. Shaving now. I think we can probably say I'm getting there, sorry. Much lighter.
bring that down the middle just a little bit quick hold up see what's going on good there there Again, work down different stages of this. You can even slide the square along. Whole body stance, so important for there. I've got a bit there that I don't like. It's amazing how much difference one cat can make. That's better. Good. So I'm just dropping back onto the bench again. Just going to go back with the winding stick just to check we haven't got a high spot in the middle. So I can position it. I'm pulling either end just to see what's happening there. That's good. Corner to corner. Okay. The thing's pretty good there. That looks nice. Checking we're not hollow, we look pretty good. So at this stage, we have on here, hopefully we can see on the overhead, we have our arrow, if I bring them back in. So we have our arrow, face side, we want to do face edge. All right, so we have our mark coming off that identifies where we are. All right, so arrow we did earlier, face side, face edge, so we know this is now flat. This is level, and that corner, if I drop them right back down here, remember we said about the corner earlier? That means now that's square. So that's done the first one. All right, so we've got edge, side, that's the first bit. So now, going to repeat that process, going to do exactly the same on the other bit of sycamore, and then on the bit of oak. So at this stage, all right, we've leveled the face and an edge of each board. So one face, one edge. All right, we can kind of put them together on there. That's how they've got to go in configuration. The bit of oak, if we just have a close-up view of that, let's just have a quick look. This edge on the top here, I've still got to play with. You can see it's still got that, that sawn edge. If I just put the bit of sycamore down, the other side we've got find up, find up bottom, nice square corner. The other side, still got to play with. So we've got those two faces to do. So next stage really what I'm going to do is concentrate on the bit of oak. We're going to square up the face. So we've got our face edge, we're going to do a parallel line, and then we do the one the other way, and then we've got to do the two bits of sycamore. So let's just move that out of the way a minute, move that back. Um, let's just clear the little bit of work. That gives you an idea of the, what we've been doing. Okay. So we've moved. No, let's just put the sycamore out the way, just put the plane up on top for a minute. A bit of oak. Let's just have a look at I think overhead might be good. I'm going to probably try and hold this in the vise, I think. We need to know where the finished section of this is. Okay, so let's bring that in. Just looking at the camera angle, I think maybe that highlights it a bit better. We're just looking at now, even with my fingers here, I come up, this is thicker thinner down here, other side that's thicker again. So my finished section, width-wise, is there. So I've got a cutting gauge, okay? There are different types. This is a wheel one. So this has a little round wheel on here. And there, we're gonna come along, all right? So we can mark along with this. So I need to set this up so I am just inside, that'll do, that face to make it easier. I'm going to drop it back in the vise. Let's just bring that over to there. We have one of our face edges here. Lock it off. The reason I put it in the vise, it makes it easier to pull along. 
I can go from either direction, it's going to pull it towards me. From here, I can push out. I'll create a scribe line down through. Being quite positive with my hand here on the side of the board, pushing in. See what's going on there, that's good. Coming down through. So I've got a line that comes down. I'm going to turn it over 180 degrees now. Go to there. We're working off our back face. We've got our arrow. We've got something flat to work off. Lock that off. Again, I'm turning marking gauge round just so I can get the thicker bit on there. Got a bit of angle on this bit of board. I can feel it. So it's making it a little bit tricky to mark up. line down through there. All the way along. That's good. Let's just see if we can get that in. I don't know if we go to the overhead. You should be able to see. I'll come down here. Little score line hopefully there. Let's look at that. Okay, so that line comes all the way down through. That's now giving my guide of where I want to be. Just looking at the timber now as well. Again, I expect we look on the overhead. Let's just see if we can get the grain direction here, these fibres are coming up that way. Look at this line here. I want to be now planing that way. If I plane against this, oh, it's coming out here, I'm going to push that round and break those fibres off. I want to be pushing down onto those. So again, let's have a quick look on the overhead just to see where that is. I'll bring my arm back in. So these fibres are coming out. I want to be where the angle is there. If I can hold it still. Back, there you go. So the fibres are coming out that angle. If I plane against them, I'm going to tip them over and bend them. If I plane against them, we're pushing them down. So that's our direction of feed. We want to start this end, coming to the far end. So again, let's clear that out. Put that down. Um, now I can even at this stage, and hadn't really thought too much of this at the moment. Make my life easier to see what's going on again. Why not come around the end? Quite a bit of material there. Flip him over. Come down through. I can see my face side. Again, make sure I've sat flat. Very little off this corner. A little bit there, but a lot more off the other end at the moment, which you won't really see at the moment. So. Tiny little bit. This side, oh, I've got, wow, well, quarter of an inch, five mil there at the corner. So a lot of material there. Checking which way we're going. A bit of a pain, really, because it'd be nicer to plane it the other way round. I mean, I could always get the ampidextrous. Let's go the other way, just, for, just to flatten off that corner a little bit. Now, I know I've got a lot of material up there. Just knock off a little bit, good. Now let's go the correct way with our grain. That's given me something now just to sit on nicely so I can balance the plane. And we know this cut shouldn't go down too far at the moment. The minimum thinnest bit, right on the bottom right hand corner. moment, a bit of bulk removal. I'm just going to have a quick look at my line on the end. Am I looking visibly at this stage? I know I've got a bit of material to come off. Am I looking equal? And just a quick check. You can have a scribe line down, but there's more of this end still. Ooh, 
little bit more resistance off the oak than the sycamore. Bring the blade back just a touch. Bring it back up. Some of it help it work. A bit of candle wax. Help it glide. So while we stop, let's have a quick look. So I'm now checking my line. Quite equal down through there. That's better. Lost that high corner. Other side we're flat, we're coming down. That's good. Just playing with the plane adjustment. So at this stage, working across it. Keeping my hand pressure nice and equal. Definitely don't want to be tipping the front of the plane up to meet that corner. In. Give it two or three mils still to get on this back edge to make us equal. Visual check to see what's going on. I can see my line here coming up. Still a bit thicker coming down, thinner there. So we need more of that back corner still. Again, let's have a look. So I've got my line coming through, still got a bit to come down and through. Visual check is good at this stage. And just monitoring where we are. Pretty equal at the moment, coming round. A bit thicker left hand side than right hand. Okay. Yeah, let's take a bit off that left hand edge. bit to go. Just going to grab the square. Just want to see quick hold, see what's going on. Now we can work off 
the face edge we have here, so we've got a face, our edge, we can work off that edge now to see if we're square. I've got a high spot right hand side, which is what we've been saying, it is definitely there. Yeah, deliberately aiming for that right hand. So starting to get things squarer, as in flat. That's better. Now we've still got to come down to that line as our square point. So at this stage, why not the winding sticks? We used them earlier. Um, in reality, we've got our scribe line we've marked round it. So we've got a face to work from, which should give us the accuracy. So if you've got the accuracy on the first side with those winding sticks, that will relate to what you're doing now. So it's all about that first stage of being correct. I've still got a high spot right hand on the corner, a little bit there. High spot left, okay. So I've got high over here, and then I've got to come across so we can come from there, let's take the shavings out, we can monitor. And there, gonna come across, bring it down. Having done our shaving, let's have a quick look. Hold it up. Tiny bit, still not quite down to the line on that corner. So we're gonna come back down free. So I don't know if we go to the overhead. Can you see that little bit more? That's her line, look. Just black enough. You see that? Oh, okay, that's fantastic. Tell us, move down to where we need to be. Back to the square quickly. Good there. Okay, I can live with that. Tiny little bit. But the tiny little bit's probably less than my hand plane blade. Or shaving. Right, okay, let's just grab, I think. I'm gonna move that back. Oh. Might as well get rid of them, I mean, yeah, that. We're there. That there, hopefully. Now, I've got to check I've got the right end, I have. I've got my two pencil lines on here. They're gonna go there and there. That one's gonna come up on. Now this is gonna tell us at this stage, just from a visual look, how does that look on there? I'm gonna block the chisels out behind us. That's not bad, we haven't got a gap. It's looking pretty clean, so when we get to glue that up, that's gonna be good. So, at this stage, whew, it's uh, go get a drink at this stage, have a cool down. Next bit we're gonna do, gotta do exactly the same to the sycamore. I've gotta mark a scribe line round it, and I'm gonna level top edge, get that down, and then I can work on the outside edges. The bit of oak that we've got in here, still high in the centre, I can mark that in a minute, but I don't know the height of that, because that's going to relate to whichever the lowest point is on my bit of sycamore. So now I've got to figure out where I'm lower, might be here. All right, so I've got to find that first, we'll transfer, and then to the other sycamore, and then we can do the bit of oak as well. I think you get the idea. Right, okay, so we've just finished the bit of oak, so I've done that in the middle, so that now fits flush in here. It's not bad, that's good. So, tiny little bit, and I mean, wow, on there. That goes on top. Next thing you need to do is just surface these, all right? So it's got to clean the edges up. So we're going to do exactly the same as we've done. Got our marking gauge, we're going to come round and mark those out and do those, both those side edges, get them down to the same width. That's my next little stage. You're going to see how much we're making on this. So our shavings on here, look, okay? So, getting quite visual. Major thing with this, keep that plane sharp. Have I sharpened it? Yeah, I have. Okay, in between cuts, we've done, especially if we've gone from the sycamore, then to the oak, and then back to the sycamore, I need it nice and sharp, all right? The oak definitely is more resistant, so you need to just touch it up. We've done lots of videos on that, so quite easy to do. So. Next one, like I said, I'm just going to mark these out and then we'll level these. I don't know if you want to watch that. We've probably seen enough of me marking up. and So we'll see you in a minute when it's done. Check our line. Just down to, okay. 
So let's bring that all together a minute. Let's move our plane round. I think we bring that back into here. Okay, so we've got our three boards stacking up. I'm just lining things up on the back. Tiny little whisper edge there I've got. We can grasp that when we glued it. They're pretty good now if you consider no gaps. When it's glued up, it's going to look great. All right, so simple thing, isn't it? Hand planing up some boards, getting parallel. That's what we've done. Everything is now from our first initial face edge and edge. So we've got our face, our edge, we've got that nice corner. Then we're taking those markings all the way around. We've repeated it on each of the boards to give us the same thickness. Then from there, we can glue that together. So last few things we've got to do, we've got to square the ends up. I also want to clean up the glue surface on here. Got a little bit of a line down through, a little bit of a change there. Things are pretty flat, but it'd be nice just to clean it up. So I'm going to skim the surface very lightly. So I'm going to come back down to here. I've sharpened the plane. That's paramount again. So we're just going to grip it in the towel vise. Bring that in. All right, so we're going to get a plane. We're going to skim this very lightly is my aim. So let's see what we got. A little bit heavy. We're going to put things up and down. Okay, that's good. I can gently come up now. So I'll deliberately round the blade just back in. Gently coming up, just starting to get something there. And I don't want a lot. Nice fine. I'm actually just cleaning up the surface if you like. Grubby fingertip marks. And really that glue. Okay, so we just skim that flat, get rid of the glue, make sure it's nice and clean. I've lost my pencil marks. Great, all right, so we've taken a minute amount off both sides. Nice and flat. No one want to square the ends up, so I'm going to need a square. We use that magic word, we want to square them up, so better go with a square. Let's go ruler, because I know this isn't wide enough, so I need to extend it. So we're going to use the ruler and the square together just to come across. We haven't touched anything on the sides, so we haven't got to worry about that. So let's lay this out. We'll get this one done, and then we'll get you in. You can see the other one. Go look at maximum length I want. Checking what we've got on that bit of board there. Actually pretty square on there. So maybe we can keep that end. And we'll cut that bit off. All right, so on this end, all I've got to do is cut from there across the other. That one's done. The other end I know it's not as good, so we're going to need to look at that a bit better. So we'll get you in, you can have a closer look at that one. And got this bit, now I can feel this. Let's put the square in, you can see that, all that movement. So we've got to get rid of that. The other board's longer. This is the shortest corner. I'm going to do the same we did before. Bring the two together. Got to lose a little bit because I've got to be able to get the saw in through there. We're going to bring that on, look. Okay, up to there. Next thing I'm going to do, I don't know if we can readjust just up a little bit. Look, let's have our line, we come up round. Give me a guide on here. I'm going to look down over it. I need a pencil line. Come down there to help me. Okay, that just becomes a good guideline. I've obviously got to do the same down this end as well. Take our board. This one's got that nice square corner. I'm gonna go with the tannin saw, I think will work nicely for this. This I can kind of cheat because I've already got an edge I can use. Got a start point now. Oh, just watching my line a little bit. Coming back. Back to that pencil line on the face now is helping me guide the saw. And the saw will only cut pushing. I'm not going to cut on the pull stroke.
So we've got the one bit cut, not too bad, we're going to do that. We've got to turn the board around, we're going to repeat it and do exactly the same. Okay. Right. So, we'll cut off. Let's lose that again. A little bit just to play, then we've got a little step here, nothing much. Get that. So, let's put them in the vise. Just checking where we are, looking how level we are. Glue joints, interesting thing to do here. Got that oak nicely. Beautiful surface contact, really good. That's nice to know. Back to our plane. At the moment we have vertical grain, this is all end grain. We're going to plane across it, but actually I want to plane in reality probably to the middle from either side. I don't want to be coming off the far end or the fibres here, we're going to break off. All right, so we get the plane, we're going to come across. Now I've got to get my square, start monitoring. With it being end grain, nice and sharp gentle movements. All right, so if we come all the way across with the plane, the upright fibres here, run the wrists are going to break out. So we're going to plane almost to the middle from both sides. Come in, we're going to check we're square, everything else. So our plane, nice and sharp, we've got some end grain. What we're trying to clean up really is that saw cut and obviously get this square. You might not think I'm taking anything off. We're cutting end grain, so it's going to be a bit dustier, possibly. Let's get the square in a minute and have a look, see where we are. I've got a tiny bit of drop this side. High spot this side. That's the bit I'm cutting at the moment as well, which is good. In, feeling what's happening. Okay, that's one done. Bring this up. I think I put him on there a minute. So I've got something nice and clean. Should be pretty square there. Still got a little bit of pencil over, that's good. If I can get him on this way. We're square down through there as well, which is good. Gonna do the other end. We'll see in a minute. So hopefully you've enjoyed this, okay? So it's quite a simple little project, as we said. If you've enjoyed, subscribe, give us those thumbs up, have a go yourself, and enjoy.